Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter through it, for the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Mark chapter 1, verse 14. And after John had been taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Now, beginning here with Mark, I think it is quite telling what's going on here. And it's quite a rebuke to our modern evangelistic methodology. If we were to rewrite this based upon what we see in the modern evangelical community, it would be something like this. Jesus saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Now who would like to ask me into their heart? Do you see the problem? The language that we use today is not used in the New Testament in any place. Who would like to repeat this prayer after me? Oh, I see that hand. Come forward. We see none of that. But in the message of our Lord, we see repent and believe. In the apostolic invitation, we see repent and believe. In the great confessions of the church, we see repent and believe. It is only until we come into this modern time that we hear nothing of repentance and faith unless it's redefined in the context of receiving Jesus, which means pray this prayer and ask Him into your heart. And if you've done that sincerely, you can stand on the fact that you've been born again. Now that is serious, folks. This is serious. I, I preach in many churches where they're absolutely appalled that I do not lead people in prayers. That I simply command with the authority of Scripture that men repent of their sins and believe the gospel and then sit down with them at time for hours explaining to them repentance and faith and praying with them, hoping that Christ be formed in them. They would rather have me get people to raise their hands, come forward, pray a prayer, and then go eat somewhere. This is the reason for all the noise about personal one-on-one -on -one discipleship. Back in the late 70s and early 80s, there was this just birth of personal discipleship. And if you talk to many people about the reasons for discipleship, personal discipleship, they would say this. There's just as many people walking out the back door of our church as walking in the front door of our church. They're coming in, they're not staying, and the reason is they're not being discipled personally. Well, first of all, I believe that personal discipleship can be of great benefit. But here's something that I want you to know. The history of the church knows very little about that sort of thing. Most men were discipled through the preaching of the Word of God. So maybe we need all this discipleship because the pulpit is so weak. But I think that they entirely missed the point. Our brother talked about men seeing the problem but giving the wrong answer. The reason there were just as many people and still are just as many people going out of the church as coming into the church is because the gospel that we're preaching is not the gospel. It's a truncated version of the gospel and the invitation we give cannot even be found in the New Testament. Now, does anyone have a problem with that? The reason why they are leaving, well, they went out from us because they were not of us. They were not truly converted. And sometimes the Lord will send unique individuals to our church as a rebuke. For example, you'll try to win someone, you will try to manipulate someone, you will try to get someone to make a decision, then you'll work very hard at discipleship, calling them on Saturday night to make sure they're ready for Sunday, going by and picking them up, and following them around like a little puppy, trying to make sure that they walk the Christian life, and then one day some drunk that you don't even want in your church walks in, gets saved, and you can't chase him out. Why? Because God saved him. Am I against personal discipleship? Absolutely not. But that is not the reason why people, after they are 
converted continue on in their ungodliness. They continue on in their ungodliness because they're still ungodly because they weren't converted. They were not.